Hello, and welcome to How Southwest Airlines Diverted Due to Coronavirus. I'm John Lauer, Senior Manager of Data Governance at Southwest, and I thank you for joining. We don't have a lot of time today, so we're going to focus mostly on the things that we did to pivot as a result of this global pandemic. But if you want to hear more about our program overall and how it ties to the Calibra data intelligence journey, be sure to catch our upcoming webinar, monitor Calibra events and LinkedIn for a time and date to be announced soon. Before we dive into the content, I just wanted to take a second to chat about this crazy world that we live in. This pandemic has impacted each and every one of our lives in a lot of different ways. It's a scary time. Our personal lives, our professional lives, in most cases both, have been heavily impacted by this. Southwest Airlines has been impacted greatly, as have all airlines, but at least we've been able to keep operating. There's some of you who are watching are probably in the retail industry or restaurants and you've been required to shut down entirely. We're all worried about the future right now. We're all worried about what our jobs look like now, what they look like in the future. I've spent the last two plus years of my life pouring my blood, sweat and tears into building this program from the ground up at Southwest. And when the pandemic really started to flare up in mid-March, I talked to my team and I said, we have to make sure that we are doing things to provide value to Southwest in the short term and in the long term. And that was really the birth of this presentation. I talked to Calibra about the idea and they loved it because we thought it was something that we could put out there that hopefully at least a few of them well, a few of you will find value in this and you can take some of the things we did and use them in your own programs to help to preserve them going forward. With that said, the rest of the agenda is to take a look at our over, the overview of our program and our original plans for rolling out because that sets the context for what we changed. Then we'll dive into the diversions that we made, the changes that we made to keep providing value. And then we'll touch briefly on what our path forward looks like once we're hopefully becomes a little bit more normal again down the road. So the approach overall for our data governance program came from an assessment that I did when I first took this over. And I knew we'd had some prior challenges with data governance at Southwest in the past. And I wanted to make sure we were hitting the mark. So we talked to about 55 people across the company, heavy data users. And what we heard from almost every single one of them was that our biggest data challenges was that they couldn't find the right data. They didn't know what the data meant. They didn't know how to use the data if they did find it. This problem was compounded by the fact that we had rolled out Alteryx and Tableau for self-service data movement and reported analytics a couple years earlier. And those are fabulous tools. They've caught on like crazy and everybody loves them. But by giving it to people without a catalog to the data, it's like giving a child a Christmas present without the batteries in it, right? They were working with one hand behind their back so we decided that we needed to start with a metadata-driven approach to build out a glossary and a data dictionary and help answer these questions for people about how to find and use the data. That doesn't mean we're not doing governance in your traditional sense of the word of thou shall do these things. We are doing some of that. We will do more of that down the road. But what I say to people all the times at Southwest is we can't govern what we don't know about. We have to start by building this catalog. The next thing we took a look at was how are we going to frame up and prioritize our efforts? There are lots of different ways you can do this. Some organizations go department by department. Some organizations look at a specific source system and they do the data that's in that source system. Some look at a specific use case of reports that are being used. We thought all of those were valid, but we felt like the best approach for Southwest was to start by coming up with a taxonomy that we could classify every piece of data at Southwest, where every piece fits into one and only one of these 13 domains, and then the subdomains are the next level of detail below that. This taxonomy also helps with our prioritization. So you see the one, two, three, and four, those are our top priorities, but they're not just the top priorities of our data governance program. They're the top priorities of our data program. They're the top priorities that are tied to the capabilities that the business wants to be able to operate on to enhance the, the experience for our customers and for our employees. By aligning our priorities with these other priorities, 
it puts us in a position of going out to work with people who are already interested in working and talking to us as opposed to going to them out of nowhere and saying, hey, I need your time to talk about a definition when they actually have other parties they're wanting to work with. So with all of those in place, the next thing we had to do was decide, okay, now how are we going to actually build this catalog? We know where, what we want to build. We know how we're going to, where we're going to focus it, but we need to actually decide the details of what we're going to build. This is a simple slide, but there's a lot of power in it. The top of it says we're going to build business glossary. This aligns very closely to, to Cleaver's approach with all the business terms. And we put in there what they mean, how they're categorized, which ones are sensitive data, which ones aren't, all of those things that we need to tag and track about the data. That's where our business data stewards and our data owners operate so that they can go in there and get the correct attribution on it and approve of the, the definitions, everything. That all happens in that conceptual business glossary layer. On the bottom side of the slide is a technical catalog. And that's where we go off and we scan things using the built-in scanners with Kleeb. Right now we're scanning our Teradata data warehouse and our Tableau environment. And over time, we intend to continue to scan more and more things and bring it in and tie it. But then the real power in this concept comes when you link those two together. So now somebody can say, I have a business term, where should I go report on it? And they can go down that chain to find the data in a database. If they start on the other side, and they're, let's say they're looking at a table in a database and they find a field there, they don't know what it means, they can actually go up the chain to find the business glossary and look at the business definition or who they should contact on the business side to get more understanding of what that data means. So we did all of this over the course of about two years. We figured out the approach, we put it together, we started building content, we did a tool selection, Calibra was the perfect fit for us, we acquired Calibra, we did the initial implementation, and we were sitting at the beginning of March ready to roll this thing out across the enterprise. We had our plans in place, our training materials ready to go to our first set of data owners and stewards and train them how to go in and put content into Calibra and work it through the approvals and workflows. Well, we all know what happened in the middle of March, right? It became very quickly apparent that that idea wasn't going to happen. We weren't going to roll out the way we thought we were going to roll out. Once we knew that we couldn't do that, we said, let's slide back over this concept that we already had of the glossary, the catalog, the links, but rather than rolling with basic limited functionality attribution like we were originally going to that we could build on over time, we now have the time to actually broaden these out and expand functionality across the board. So when we roll it out down the road, we'll have even more that people could immediately take advantage of. So there's really three key areas that we're doing this in order to provide that extra value. One of them is we're actually enhancing Calibra itself. So we're putting more functionality into the tool, building new things into it. The second one is my team is actually creating content on our own. And we'll talk more, a little bit more about how that works. Um, we're also building new partnerships. We had lots of partnerships in place already. Some of those partnerships are people that just flat out don't have time to work with us right now. One of our key areas I mentioned was our people domain. And that's our HR department, our people department. Well, they're busy right now trying to figure out how to keep people in their jobs and how to deal with keeping people safe when they come to work. And, and our other people in the flight, everything are, are busy with how do we keep our customers safe? So we've gone back and looked at our partnerships and come up with some new ones that can help me keep us moving forward in the short term. So let's dig a little bit more into each of those now. We won't have a lot of time for these, but if you wanna know more about these, we'll be doing a follow-up live Q&A within the next couple of weeks, and I'm gonna bring some people on my team into that session so we can dig into the details of any of these you wanna talk about. So the things that we're doing with Calibra is implementing reference data. Originally, we weren't planning to do that, but now that we have some time, we're actually putting those code sets and code values into Calibra, both for the things that we are specifically tagging to our business terms or our technical data, and for other things that can actually help people just as a basic lookup. Um, we're putting validation rules into place. I mean, if the data governance team can't have clean data in Calibra, how can we expect anybody else to? So by putting these validation rules into place, we can actually help to 
make sure that the data that comes in is complete and consistent and follows all of the expectations. Um, policies is another piece that we're planning to look at. We haven't really gotten into that one yet, but we think there's some good potential there from using the policy asset types into Calibra to tie in things like retention policy and data sensitivity policies and have a little bit more robustness around how that works. Um, workflow enhancements, our original workflows were very basic. Like I said, we were looking at a MV, minimal viral product, MVP type approach of rolling out the basics. But now that we have more, some more time, we're working on some other things like bringing our technical stewards into the workflow so that when the business steward needs to actually make sure they're connected to the right data, rather than having to go do that offline through phone calls or emails, we can actually route that to the technical steward through Calibra now and have their participation be in the system and be logged along with all of the other steps that happen for that asset along the way. The help desk is something that we feel like can, can really help to move things along by using that functionality in Calibra to automatically route things like some, when somebody finds an issue with some data or when somebody feels like a definition of the business term isn't correct, they can be routed directly to the technical steward or the business steward without my, without my team having to even get involved in it. And then finally, the import and export views is something that we feel like really helps since we had to stop on doing our training and roll out the way we wanted. We built a set of spreadsheets and a set of views in Calibra that are exact matches to each other. So we can actually take some of the data, export it into these spreadsheets, pass that around to people, let them do their updates there, work with them offline, and then we can take it and upload it right back into Calibra. So we accomplished the same thing as if those people had done it in Calibra like we had originally planned, but instead we're working in an in a asynchronous method. The second main piece of things that we're doing is we're actually drafting content. I mentioned this earlier. My team actually has a lot of knowledge about the data. We've been working with business partners on a, in a variety of different ways. So what we can do now where we're not in a position to partner as closely with the business, we can take a lot of things and advance them down the path and get them almost to the finish line. So when the time comes, we can very quickly and easily take them and move them across with an easy approval or a few tweaks with the business partners, as opposed to having to start from scratch from them. We're also doing the offline methods for things like email approval. So rather than getting 10 or 12 or 20 people into a room to talk about what's the definition of a passenger count or what's the definition of a retiree, we can actually take these definitions that we've started on our own and pass those offline back and forth to our business partners for their review and, and some tweaks that way. And then we are also using other parts of technology. I said that my team knows the business, but we're in an enterprise wide group. We don't know the business, anything like our IT partners who are specifically aligned with those various business partners. So we're using them to collect that information and we also have some other sources out there. We found a glossary that was in QuickBase that has literally thousands of terms in it. They were crowdsourced by another major program. They weren't curated, they weren't cleansed, but my team is actually working through that now to get them into a state that we can load them to Calibra. The last thing that I want is for somebody to come to Calibra and find something in there that they think is wrong. For my days as a BI consultant, we always talked about it takes time after time after time of someone finding the correct data to ever forget about the one time that they found the incorrect data. And I don't want that. But one of the things that's almost as bad is for somebody to come to our new metadata repository that we're rolling out and say, well, there's nothing there. I'm not going back because I went and searched and I didn't find anything. So by using some of these approaches, we can put some of this content into the tool we're also using statuses and the articulation score, if you're familiar with that, to say this is 60% confidence or 80% confidence. It's not perfect, but somebody knows that they can use it uh, maybe with a wary eye versus something that's completely approved, but at least provides them some value by having it there. The third and final area is making those extra partnerships. A lot of it is within the technology organization. So I have peer leaders working on things like a new data lake in AWS. We're partnering with them to actually use Calibra and connect and pull that metadata out of the data lake to put it into Calibra as a master catalog. We have people building out a service catalog for the, our enterprise data services of what's available from a technical standpoint, 
but they don't have or want the business concept of those in there. It's a technical catalog. If we pull it into Calibra, we continue to place Calibra as that central repository, the master data repository for metadata about data. So those are win-wins for all of us to help to do that. Um, the last thing I'll mention here very quickly is the Enterprise Data Science Center. I think that's an important one to talk about because that's our core set of data scientists at Southwest. We have data scientists across the organization, but these are the ones who are providing the guidance and the standards that all of the data scientists should be working with. They have been working for several years with data. They're heavy users and they have their own repository of their models and their data that they've collected and used. We've actually done a proof of concept and moving into pilot phase with them now to take that and bring it into Calibra, once again, placing Calibra as that central repository across the entire enterprise. The last thing I wanna talk about is people ask, what happens down the road? How do we actually transition from these other things we're working on back to our original plan? And it's really quite simple because nothing fundamental has changed in our approach. We're still building a metadata repository. We're still categorizing data by the domains, applying data owners and stewards to them to get the data, the information in there correctly. The only thing that really changes is when the time comes for us to shift back to rolling this out to our other business users, we're gonna have a bigger and broader set of functionality that we can roll out and provide even more value to the organization. I really thank you for your time today. I hope this has been helpful to you. The last thing I wanna say is just, I know that some of you are afraid to fly at this point and I can certainly understand that, but there will be a time that you're either going to want to or need to get on an airplane again. And I hope that when you do, it's one of our Southwest 737s. From my Southwest heart to yours, I hope you stay safe, stay healthy and carry on. Thank you.